Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about the structure of bacterial cell. Now, first let's look into the different types of bacteria that have been classified based on some specific criteria. So, the first type which we are going to discuss will be the types of bacteria based on shape. First of all, based on shape, the first uh, type of bacteria which are there is known as coccus. So, what are these? These are spherical or ovoid as you can see in this picture. So, these are spherical or they can be ovoid in structure. Now, they can be monococcus that means single cells that is each cell is singular that is uh, no pairing or uh, different cells are not attached with each other. So, these are individual uh, isolated cells. So, they are known as monococcus. Next is they can be in uh, the form of diplococcus that means two as you can see over here two uh, are uh, pairing together. So, these are known as diplococcus then tetracoccus that means four if they are uh, coming together. So, they are known as tetracoccus streptococcus if they occur in chains that means if they are occurring in a form like this that is they are if they are occurring in chains. So, they are known as streptococcus the next form is if they are they are known as staphylococcus if they form like uh, groups as in grapes as we can see suppose they if they form in groups and they form bunch like structure so these are known as staphylococcus and the last one is sarsina this these are three dimensional geometric shape so they give geometric three di dimensional shapes so these are the coccus varieties which we have discussed next let, let's move on to the second type based on shape which we have classified is known as bacillus. So, these are straight, they are cylindrical and mostly rod like shape with flattened ends. They can also be like diplococcus if two of these rod like structures are together they are known as diplococcus and they are known as streptobacillus sorry it is not a coccus it is bacillus that is diplobacillus and streptobacillus means if they occur in chains. The third type again based on shape which we have classified is known as spiralum that is they can be coiled or like a corkscrew they can have spiral structures like this. So, these are known as uh, spiralum categories as you can see in this picture and the fourth type is known as vibrio they are mostly comma or curved shape as you can see over here a very common example of these type of bacteria are vibrio cholerae which comes uh, which actually is responsible for a very common disease we know cholera. Now, let us look into the types of bacteria which have been classified on the basis of the presence of flagella. So, what is flagella? Flagella is nothing but whip like structures made up of flagellin proteins. So, these are present in the bacterial cell surface. So, let us look into the types. First of all, etrichus. Etrichus means you can see there is no flagella. So, if flagella is absent, so these category is known as etrichus. Now, Next is monotrichus. Monotrichus means as we can know mono means one if a single flagella is present as you can see over here. The next category is amphitrichus if single flagella are present on the opposite ends. So, you can see a flagella over here and again a flagella over here. So, these are known as amphitrichus. The next type is known as lophotrichus if a tuft or a group of uh, flagella is present only at a single side these are known as lophotrichus. So, you should know that it should be present only at a single site. You can see the other surfaces there is no flagella. The next type is peritrichus which means that flagella is spread all over the cell surface. So, we can fi find flagella all over the surface of the bacterial cell. And the last category of this type is known as cephalotrichus which has got group or bunch of uh, flagella present on the opposite ends as you can see over here. In this end also there is a group or tuft of flagella. On this end also we have a group of flagella. So, these are the types on the basis of uh, flagella. Now, let us look into the again another uh, type of classification of bacteria based on gram staining. Gram staining is nothing but a technique which was developed by a scientist named as Hans Christian Gram. So, based on that uh, we have classified bacteria into mostly two types which we are going to discuss. So, gram staining is a type is a uh, technique in which we try to color the bacteria that is we use dyes in order to color the cells. Now, first let us discuss about the procedure of gram staining how we perform this technique of gram staining. First of all 
the cells which we use bacterial cells are stained with an alkaline stain which is known as crystal violet this is the first stain which we are going to use the next step is the cells are treated with 0.5 percent of iodine solution after the treatment of iodine solution what we do is we wash with water and then with alcohol or acetone so basically this alcohol or acetone they act as decolorizer they remove the color the fourth step is counter staining with saffron that is we use a different stain first we have used crystal violet now we use a counter stain which is known as saffron and lastly we wash with water so these are the basic steps or procedure for gram staining now let us take a look based on gram staining what are the different types of bacteria we have classified we mostly got two types of bacteria on the basis of the stains these bacterial cells are taking first of all it can be gram positive bacteria so these appear dark dark blue or purple in color as you can see in this picture so it appears mostly dark blue or purple in color so these these appear uh, this color because they have taken the first stain which we have discussed that is crystal violet the second type of the bacteria is gram negative bacteria they appear like very light red or pink in color as you can see why this color because they have taken not the first stain that is crystal violet but they have taken the counter stain which is saffron now let us talk about the procedure of gram staining let's uh, see a schematic picture uh, how this process is done first of all the fixation is a process in which the cells are fixed in glass slides why this is done so that the cell do not move around when we are trying to look through a microscope hence fixation is done this is mostly heat fixed or it can be air dried also now the next process is staining with crystal violet as you can see over here after crystal violet staining what we have discussed we treat with iodine treatment here this is the iodine treatment part next we use a decolorizing agent which is mostly alcohol or acetone so this is the decolorizing step here we are seeing and lastly we do a counter staining with the stain known as saffronin and here the counter staining step is done so you can here you, again you can see the gram positive bacteria looks like this and the gram negative bacteria look like this uh, light pink or red in color now let us look into the mechanism of gram staining that is high how this uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria are being stained so we'll study this by a comparative study first of all gram positive bacteria these have got very thick peptidoglycan layer in compared to that gram negative have, have got very thin peptidoglycan layer now when we do the first staining method that is staining with crystal violet what happens after crystal violet uh, staining we have treated it with iodine also so after treatment with iodine it forms a cvi complex that is crystal violet iodine complex now this complex is a very bigger like structure and they get intercalated between the peptidoglycan layers now the peptidoglycan is mostly present as meshwork as i am showing over here so the cvi complexes get stuck into these meshwork type structure and they cannot come out compared to that in case of gram negative bacteria so it is not a very big meshwork or thick uh, peptidoglycan layer so we have discussed it's a thin peptidoglycan layer so the cvi complexes here do not get stuck and it can easily come out now when we do the washing step like the decolorizing step with alcohol or acetone what happens alcohol treatment dehydrates the cell so if the cell dehydrates what will happen it will shrink that is the peptidoglycan layer will shrink and already present cvi complex in the gram positive bacteria they will get more intercalated or more stuck into the cell wall layers in compared to gram negative since alcohol treatment removes the lipid bilayer which is present outside the peptidoglycan layer so it removes that and we have also talked that the thin peptidoglycan layer is present unlike gram positive so the cvi complexes get removed easily next what we do we do a counter staining where the gram positive bacteria do not take the saffron stain because the already void or empty spaces have been taken up by the cvi complexes in compared to that gram negative bacteria the empty spaces are taken up by the counter stain which is known as saffronin and they appear as light blue or pink whereas the gram positive they appear as violet or purple in color so in this video 
we have talked about the different types of bacteria based on shape. We have talked about the types of bacteria that have been classified based on the presence or absence of flagella. We have also talked about the type of bacteria based on a process called gram staining. And we have also compared the gram staining methods between the gram positive and gram negative, why they are gram positive and why they are gram negative. I hope you have understood this video and enjoyed it. Thank you.